Hello and uh, welcome to Gumbo's Flying Circus and here today uh, we're going to be flying the uh, training mission 2 for the P47D-30 uh, Thunderbolt uh, for DCS World, the brand new module. So uh, this one's the aircraft startup and we're going to have a little run through this lesson and uh, see what it entails to get this uh, aircraft up and running. So uh, let's see what this, let's see how this goes. In this lesson, we'll start in a cold and dark P-47 we need to bring to life. This can be a long process as described in the manual, so you can also enable an auto start function if you're in a hurry. But for this lesson, we'll review the full startup procedure used by pilots in World War II and still used by Warbird pilots today. The key here is to find a sequence that you can perform every time so it becomes second nature. And some steps must be performed in order, but you have a lot of discretion while performing other tasks. Some prefer to perform actions in a left to right sweep, while some prefer to group actions by system or function. The best sequence for you may or may not be the one laid out here, so look for techniques that work best for you. We'll begin with a quick sweep around the cockpit to check for trouble before the engine is running. First, set the air filter to on for dusty conditions, or off if no dust is expected. We're starting on a paved airfield today, so this can be left off. Then, verify the gear handle is down and set the flaps lever forward to the up position. You'll usually leave the flaps up for takeoff and leave the handle in place to equalize the hydraulic pressure on both sides. That will keep them in sync as they extend and retract. Press spacebar to continue. Now, check that the fuel boost pump rheostat is rotated counterclockwise to the start altitude position. Then, rotate the fuel selector to main. This puts the fuel system into the correct configuration for startup. Also, set the generator switch up to on. This will provide electrical power once the engine is up and operating. Press spacebar to continue. Next, we test the hydraulic hand pump. Give it two or three pumps and verify the hydraulic pressure on the main instrument panel increases. This is to verify hydraulic pressure can be built up manually to extend the gear and flaps in the case of a hydraulic pump failure. Press spacebar to continue. Now let's check the flight controls. Control rods are connected to the stick that move the ailerons on the wings and elevators on the horizontal tails in response to your actions. Control cables connect the rudder pedals to the rudder on the vertical tail. Move the stick and rudder through their full range of travel. We're looking for freedom of movement and the correct response from all the flight control surfaces. If you don't get that, this would be a good opportunity to map your flight controls to the proper access. You can access the control settings by pressing escape and selecting adjust controls. Press spacebar to continue. Next, we check and set the trim tab controls. Run them through their full range of travel and check for correct operation. This is usually done with help from the crew chief, but you can verify this yourself by entering the external view, F2, then return to the cockpit using the F1 key. For takeoff, we set aileron to neutral, rudder to takeoff, elevator to neutral for an empty auxiliary fuel tank, or elevator to one quarter inch forward of neutral for a full auxiliary fuel tank. We have an empty auxiliary fuel tank today, so go ahead and set that to neutral. Press spacebar to continue. Let's check the tow brakes for proper operation and make sure the parking brake is set for startup. Depress and release the tow brakes located on the rudder pedals and check they operate freely. If they do not, this is another good opportunity to double check your control settings and map your own controls to the proper axis. Then, to reset the parking brake, pull the knob, depress and release the tow brake pedals, then release the knob. The tow brake should remain depressed. This will help keep us from creeping forward when the engine is running. Press spacebar to continue. Next, let's set the prop switch up to auto for startup. This ensures the prop RPM is controlled through the prop lever on the throttle quadrant. 
Then, check and set the altimeter. Now this can be set so the field altitude reads zero, or you can rotate the knob to match the briefed barometric pressure, so the field altitude is the actual altitude above sea level. That's entirely up to you. Press spacebar to continue. After that, wind and set the clock. We can wind it by rotating the knob clockwise. Now the clock should already be set to local time, but you may adjust it by clicking to extend the knob, then rotating it to the desired time if you wish to work off Zulu time or some other prearranged reference. Press spacebar to continue. Next, let's open the engine cowl flaps. This is required on the ground to prevent burning of the ignition harness under the cowling. Pull the handle until the cowl flaps open fully. These are hydraulically operated, so use the hand pump to build up some pressure if there's not some in the system already. There is no gauge for their position, but you'll see them very easily looking straight ahead. Press spacebar to continue. And now we come to a series of power on checks to verify operation of the electrically powered instruments and systems. First, set the battery switch to on. Check that the prop governor circuit breaker and all circuit breakers on the main electrical panel are in. If a breaker is extended, push it to reset. If it pops back out, there's a problem, usually an electrical short somewhere in that system. Depending on the importance of the system and urgency of the mission, you may either accept the fault and leave the system disabled, or abort the aircraft. For our purposes, this should be extremely rare though. Press spacebar to continue. Next, we'll test the warning lights. Toggle the two test switches on the main electrical panel up and down. Each switch is marked with the lights that are tested with each position. The landing gear, fuel level, oxygen, and turbine overspeed warning lights should come on as appropriate. The warning lights may also be depressed to test illumination of the bulbs. Press spacebar to continue. Now, check the fuel quantity indicator on the main instrument panel. Quantity for the main and auxiliary tanks should match the briefed level. These indicators are calibrated for an aircraft in horizontal flight, so use the correction table on the left when on the ground with the nose up. Then, check the oxygen pressure gauge to the right for a full charge. Press spacebar to continue. Then last, we test and set the intercooler and oil cooler shutters. Use the switches to cycle the shutters through their full range of motion, as shown on the indicators just to the left. For a normal startup, set both shutters to the neutral position, but in cold weather the oil cooler shutter should be set to closed. Press spacebar to continue. Now, return the battery switch to the off position. We'll start the aircraft using an external battery card connected later by the crew chief. We could start on the battery if needed, but using another power source for startup preserves the charge and extends the service life. Press spacebar to continue. With the basic system checks taken care of, it's time to start the engine. Let's set the levers on the throttle quarter to the correct position. Now, check or set supercharging full aft. Throttle cracked forward about one inch. Prop full forward and mixture aft to idle cutoff. Press spacebar to continue. Now let's ask the crew chief to connect the external battery card for startup. Open the communications menu with the backslash key and select ground crew F8. Then select ground electric power F2 and on F1. Chief, turn on the ground power. Press spacebar to continue after power is applied. Copy. Ground power is now on. The crew chief will have already rotated the props several turns by hand, so now we prime the engine. 
Right click to rotate the engine primer handle out of the locked position. Then pull the handle two to four strokes in hot weather or four to six if cold. It's a warm day so prime three strokes then right click the handle to lock it back in place. Press spacebar to continue. Now verify the prop is clear and set ignition to both to select both magnetos. Then flick the starter switch up to engage then back to off. This seats the starter brushes. Press spacebar to continue. Now these next few steps can go very quickly so let's talk through what will happen first. We're going to energize the flywheel for 15 to 20 seconds using the starter switch until the flywheel is up to speed. It's important to get the timing right, so we're going to use the clock at the top left as a reference. After 15 seconds, we engage the flywheel onto the engine by setting the starter switch to engage. This transfers the flywheel's energy to the engine to turn it over. We'll keep the switch held to engage until the engine fires, then move the mixture control to auto rich. The starter switch can be left and engaged for five or six revs of the prop to provide a hotter spark and help the engine to catch. Return it to off when the engine is running on its own. Now this requires some dexterity if you're using the mouse to do all this, so consider mapping the starter switch and mixture lever controls to a convenient place. Now when you're ready, press the spacebar and we'll run through this step by step. Okay, check the clock and hold the starter switch to energize for 15 to 20 seconds. That's 15, now engage. Look and listen for the engine to catch. Set the mixture lever to auto rich and release the starter switch after a few revs. We should be up and running. If that did not quite work, no problem. We can deal with that in the next step. Press space bar to continue. Now, if the engine does not catch on the first attempt, release the starter switch and return the mixture lever to idle cutoff. Something like the engine priming, fuel supply, or electrical power probably missed along the way. You'll want to wait one minute to allow the starter to cool down, then double check the cockpit setup before trying again. For now though, with the engine running, turn the battery switch on and request that the crew chief disconnect electrical power. Open the communications menu with a backslash key and select ground crew, F8, then select ground electric power, F2, and off. Chief, turn off the ground power. Press space bar to continue. Copy. Ground power is now off. Okay, now we need to let the engine warm up and check it out. Set the throttle so the engine RPM is about 900, and check the oil pressure right away. Shut the engine off if it's not above 25 psi within 30 seconds. Now in cold weather you can expect an oil pressure increase to about 150 to 200 psi before it settles down to its normal range of 75 to 85 psi. The oil temperature gauge should settle down at about 50 degrees celsius. Fuel pressure should be about 22 to 24 psi and cylinder head temperature should settle in at about 100 to 260 degrees. Then check for proper hydraulic pressure between 800 and 1100 psi. We'll not advance the throttle above 1000 RPM until all these are squared away. It usually takes about 3 minutes for the warm up to complete. There's one more set of checks to run after the engine is warm, but rather than wait out the full 3 minutes, let's pick up there in the next lesson. Press spacebar to continue. Now this entire process probably seems like a lot to handle at first, but you'll quickly find that most steps can be done with a glance or a quick sweep from control to control. This entire sequence that might have taken 20 minutes to run through step by step will take no more than a minute once you've found the sequence that works best for you. The auto start function is also an option if you just want to go for a quick flight, but having run through this entire sequence will have given you a lot of insight into how the systems work and how to use them when it counts. For now, you may feel free to continue looking around or in the lesson at any time using the escape key. We'll pick up again right here with the run up check in the next lesson.
Okay, so that wasn't too bad. The startup is quite uh, straightforward. There's uh, a few bits to it, but nothing too taxing. Just a few checks, and then uh, make sure you do the uh, functions uh, in order. And uh, you can do it with the mouse, as I've just done it um, after the engine catches when it's start up. So uh, yeah, that's pretty um, pretty nice, and it sounds awesome, doesn't it? A really nice engine sounds and. Everything looks really nice in the cockpit, and uh, I like all the switch sounds as well. That's really nice. So, um, yeah, it's a nice little, um, nice little training mission there for uh, number two for the aircraft startup. So, uh, anyway, guys, come and join me on the next one, and we'll be doing the run-up checks. And uh, hope that's helped you. And um, you can see what you get with the aircraft. All these free training missions are in uh, come with it. Um, so you just click on training in DCS world on the uh, main screen once you fire up the uh, sim and uh, just choose training for the P-47 and you're away. So uh, thanks to everyone that's come to watch. Hope you're doing well. Uh, hope you're staying safe and healthy. And hope to see you at the next one. Take care of yourself. Enjoy your DCS. ta -ra. Thank you for watching another Gumbo's Flying Circus live stream. Don't forget to join the Discord channel. Like, share, follow and subscribe for regular updates, chat, screenshots and more. Your kind support is always greatly appreciated. See you next time for another Gumbo's Flying Circus live stream.